this was quoted by The Economist in 2017. Um, so the world's most valuable resource is no longer oil, but data. So if you are investing in companies, uh, you realize that the in, in stock market, especially in the US, um, those companies with big market capitalizations, for example, the top 10 companies 12 years ago was different. They used to be the oil and gas company like ExxonMobil. But today, if you look at the top five companies, they're all tech companies started with Apple, Amazon, Microsoft, Google, Facebook. So those are companies who understand the power of data for further clarity, um, data is useful if you process it. So you can acquire so many data, but if you don't process the data into intelligence, it will not be valuable. So you can actually make better decision when you acquire so much of data. The question is, where should you store this data? So uh, based on uh, the registration, I was made to understand that many of you are very new in terms of cloud. So this presentation uh, on the concept level, try to help you to understand cloud. And I also understand that a few of you has already adopted cloud. This may not be uh, the, the, the best session for you, but I hope it will be a refresher course um, at least. Now, let's get back in time in uh, about data storage. You know, in 1990s, so I'm sure when you work in an office, you know on the right side, there's a floppy disk or diskette. Uh, so this floppy disk usually have the capacity of 1.4 megabyte. In 2001, a Malaysian entrepreneur vented a uh, pen drive. This is example of pen drive 128 megabyte. If you want to store 128 megabyte of data, you previously in 1990s, you need to have a stack of uh, floppy disks. Imagine, you, let's say you have a board meeting or probably you have an important presentation and you work at night, you save it on your pen drive and then the next morning you go to office and you go to traffic jam and you went, you, when you reach the office, you realize, oh no, I forgot to bring my pen drive. So what happened? There goes your day, you know? You, you can't present because the data is in your pen drive, is at your house, it's not with you. But in the cloud days, we change the way we store data. Now the data is connected to you. Now in the business context, you probably have seen this at your office. You have a server room. It looks nicer, it has a bigger storage, but every server room has its own limit. You know, um, so if you want to scale, you have to build another server room, buy more equipment, 24 hours electricity and aircon. You need to make sure that all maintainers, you need to have someone to manage it. Now, let me talk about views of cloud. So when we ask people on the street or people at the office, like, hey, uh, what do you know about cloud? They usually think about cloud is Google Drive, which is not wrong. So they would think about, oh, I have Slack. I use Google Drive, so technically I'm on cloud. Yes, it is true. But when you ask developers, uh, when you ask them about cloud, they're thinking something else. They're thinking about Amazon AWS and Azure. Okay, sorry, uh, there's uh, some technical error. But uh, uh, today, in this case, we are focusing a little bit more on the AWS and Azure, Google Cloud, Alibaba Cloud. So those are the cloud vendors. I will share with you a little bit later. In terms of definition, one is on-demand delivery of IT resources over the internet. So you can scale up or scale down. Today, you probably need 100 gig. You, so you, you use 100 gig. But tomorrow, if you need 200 gig, you can scale up any point of time without having to invest in another server. But if you need to scale down because you don't need it anymore, you can just scale it down. Second is about pay as you go pricing. So you can pay as, as how much you utilize it. So think of it like um, a utility company. This is a real business case. I'm shifting the gear a bit. Now talk about the impact of cloud to a, to a company. 
This is a company called Blockbuster Video. So in Malaysia, I think there's a similar company called Speedy Video. Basically, they sell DVDs. At one point of time, they are $5 billion company with 84,000 employees. They're huge, they're everywhere. So they feel they're very strong. Now, there's a company called Netflix. They don't have a store, but they actually deliver DVD to your mailbox. So let me give you a little bit more uh, clarity on this. This is the timeline. So Blockbuster started in 1985 and uh, in 1997, Netflix started. And uh, in 2004, Blockbuster reached its peak, but at the same time, Netflix is growing. What is game changing is that in 2007, when they adopt cloud, they allow streaming video. Just three years later, their competitor, which is Blockbuster, went from market leader from $5 billion company to bankruptcy in just six years. Imagine if, you, if Blockbuster want to serve 3 million users, they probably need to open 100 stores. But for Netflix, zero stores. Now, this is one of the reasons why um, blockbusters are not able to compete with um, uh, Netflix. In those days, you only invest in a uh, solid business case. So, for example, you look at earning per shares of companies and you look at the solid investment and then they start to realize that, oh, okay, I want to invest in this company. But a new mindset today is not about uh, it's not about holding to uh, the yesterday's mindset, but it's about thriving in uncertainty. You need to thrive in uncertainty, which means you need to take some risks. So, you know, when you want to launch a product, you don't need to wait for 100% to be perfect. Probably when you develop and you reach the 100% mark, you probably have lost 3 million customers by maximizing the power of cloud. You can see a different value proposition uh, between Blockbuster and Netflix clearly. In Blockbuster, it's time consuming to visit stores. Imagine if you are Blockbuster clients, you have to go up from your house, drive to the store, probably went to traffic jam, and then you go in, you go to the store, and you realize there are so many options. There are so many DVDs, and there's no recommendation. You have to choose, probably you ask someone besides you, probably your friend, hey, which movie I should, uh, I should watch? Uh, the, the only reason why you need to ask is that because you are paying DVDs based on uh, price per DVD. Either you rent or you pay for it. But in Netflix, you can watch any movie, anytime. You just pay one subscription fee. You don't have to worry about choose whether this is good content or not good content. If halfway you think that the movie sucks, you can just uh, switch to another movie. So if you don't know what to watch in Netflix, they will share with you, oh, the last 24 hours in Malaysia, people actually watch this kind of movies. Probably we don't have ideas, so we give you some ideas what to watch. So smart recommendation is actually very useful, personalized to, uh, to yourself. So you know, when you subscribe Netflix, for example, they will ask you for your profile. What's your preference? Do you like romantic comedy? Do you like thriller movie? Do you like what type of movies? and then they will start personalized for you. So, and that data helps them to shape a customized engine so you can actually always engage with Netflix. If you are interested to adopt cloud after all whatever that I've said, uh, and, and I would, this is a simplified version of uh, uh, the cloud uh, adoption framework. I took it from IBM. Um, there are four steps that if you want to adopt cloud, Number one is to, you need to assess. You need to assess in your respective company, there are many applications. Finance use different application, procurement use different application, business has different application. There are so many applications in the company. You need to determine which one is sensitive data, which one has a top secret data, which one is non-top secret data where you can actually put on public cloud. Then, you need to work pro, uh, likely with the cloud consultants to help you identify which cloud provider suitable for your needs. Because every cloud provider has its own strength, have their own way of uh, retaining you as a customer. And you adopt, you manage the cloud deployment. And lastly, it's about optimization because cloud is very easy to deploy 
and also because of that you may subscribe to many services easily and that might cause you a bomb maybe those services some of it you need and some of it you don't need it so you need to have a discipline to monitor the, the, the cloud consumption so this is my last slide so i would like to share this quote by peter drucker greatest danger in times of turbulence is not the turbulence but it is to act with yesterday's logic. So that, thank you very much.